Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, tonight, I am going to talk a little bit uh, about something that seems to be very modern. Uh, I'm talking about immersion. If you look up the word, you know, about virtual reality, you would think that this is something very new, you know, uh, to the uh, electronic age. But then I finally realized that all these years I have been uh, traveling to very remote places and uh, the way that I understand why certain writing is linked to a certain symbol actually I actually went through a lot of immersive experience so it's actually immersion that the ancient were already doing since very very ancient time many thousands of years ago today I'm going to show you a little bit about that you know so you will understand how we can use our senses to understand language so um, uh, uh, I will begin with my slides now. Okay, so uh, the first of the slides always, you know, to let you see what a basket starfish is like. So you will see that uh, this is what I mean by a common core. So um, I believe that uh, there is no separate family uh, tree uh, in the language family and all uh, we are is just a branch of the whole uh, organism and uh, each of us just come out you know from the same core since ancient time and because uh, the more we believe we are separate trees then we look at each other with hierarchy you know who come first who come later so uh, I will show you uh, that uh, we all share the same history we are based on the same thing that developed uh, from pictures you know to the sounds now and um, I, of course I present to you a female uh, point from an Asian uh, from the East so uh, of course you know I want you to also pay attention that I'm using the sound base with uh, with Cantonese it's not Mandarin that I use you know Cantonese is a very ancient southern uh, Chinese dialect so uh, it seems to me that you know it is also a key to find all the links between all ancient language facts Families. So uh, I will begin today with uh, how uh, I think the ancient, you know, look at uh, the world and how they started uh, writing at the very beginning. You will see that it says that the ancient hear and perceive differently. Perhaps now, even in very remote places, they still do the same thing. That's why when I live with them in the mountains, in the desert, you know, I learn to uh, look at things their way. And um, first of all, no words are isolated. And and then uh, the etymology is never as linear as the linguist would tell you because we always go back and forth, you know, without communication, there will be no further development of anything. So um, again, uh, this uh, today I'm going to show you that the ancients were already immersed in their writings. Um, First of all, I want to explain a little bit what's immersion in writing because they actually see all those letters that, that you think are letters. You know, they actually see that in real life itself. Uh, I give you the example of how uh, the ancient gradually abandoning the uh, pagan triangle. You know, uh, if you have watched some of the older uh, episodes, once again, you can uh, type the name and my program name in the YouTube. You can find all the last four. 44th episodes. Today is the 45th uh, episode. So uh, I'm, I I already talked to you about uh, how the ancient song of deer become uh, the uh, god and, and the emperor also. And then how this delta, you know, you can see this is a triangle right there, how it gradually lost, you know, in the development of our whole human history. And um, first of all, you will know that the word deor, right? And you have to look at the Greek right because they actually write it out boldly you know even if you don't know how to read or write in ancient time they can actually recognize that triangle when the whole world was building those triangle the Egyptians were building the pyramid so this big triangle is actually a very sacred sign okay so uh, but when you understand it the steels or uh, it's already you know taken over the pat patriarchs already took over the matriarch before the triangle is upside down you, the 
pubic triangle and gradually it turns upside down and become a male part and 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 by the time you look at this Dior sign is already a very patriarchal society so um how the, the world of, of pagan Dior's changed to the Dior's in uh, the uh, monotheism uh, Christianity. You will see that if you don't read or write, I mean, if you don't read writing, uh, just by the sound Dior's and Dior's, you know, actually it didn't make such a big difference. In the ear of the ancient, they were all meant the, uh, the God, you know, someone that they were fear, they respected, okay? So, um, and that's why, you know, all those uh, buildings you see in the Pantheon, in, in, in Athens, you will see the, the most uh, important temples. They were all uh, with a facade like that, with all that big triangle on top, right? So uh, the ancients, you know, uh, the uneducated will just know that whenever the triangle is right there, there's deemed to be a temple, you know, the place where God lives, right? So uh, gradually, you know, when they started to do distinguish more and more you will see that you know the, uh, coming from the all you will see that the, the the demon and the devil and you will also see that even in ancient Greek you know they will never give the capital D you know to to for the demons to use. So you can actually distinguish, even though the sound is still D, uh, but uh, only the Dios, the God, will occupy this uh, capital uh, letter D, okay? So um, the thing goes on, and when it comes to uh, the monotheism, from the pagan, everything is a God, was a God, to the uh, Dios, when the uh, Greek and the Jewish world and the, and the Greek world began to, this mono, monotheism, began Begin to worship only one God, so they began to change their uh, symbol. Instead of the triangle, they were looking for this sign. And of course, you know, you will see at the same time, uh, architecturally, the whole world changes as well. And this is the Church of Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. You will see that, you know, this is a very typical Jewish temple at the early time. So you will see that, uh, again, this is also a very feminine sign, and, and the doom starts to uh, to uh, occupy the skyline instead of this triangle and inside the doom you will really see uh, the feel of what the Dios is like that's why the early writing Theta in Greek uh, went through different stages from these to these you know of course you can see there's an eye you can see there's a fountain you can understand it in many different ways but imagine you were inside one of this temple it is very easy for you to relate to this God, the, the Dios is actually has a form like that. So you are totally enveloped, you know, by this idea of God overlooking you from above. Okay, so and uh, uh, I will go on with the other world, you know, when the monotheism uh, takes root, you know, it become uh, more, uh, takes more and more deeper root, and then the pagan world actually shrinks, you know, you will see that in the Roman world, at the beginning of the Roman world, there's still a pagan society, right, but uh, slowly it changes, you know, it will add a dome, you know, behind this triangle, of course, if you go inside, you will also feel the feeling of the God over overlooking you on that dome of course it has to do with the human technology of architect we also are uh, developed side by side with the writing okay so um and but i will show you a few pictures you will see that you know the uh, this is one of the arco the, the the triumph the arch of triumph you will see that this triangle actually shrinks uh more and more the the, the circular arch takes more and more a uh, prominent place in 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 the people's eyes so whenever they walk around they see less of this triangle but they see more and more of a rounded dome shape okay so uh, gradually you will see that uh, uh, this is uh, St. Peter's Church in the Vatican you will see that of course you know you you will uh, the architecture will tell you this is a Roman style but you will definitely see that the dome really took over if you go inside you remember what it feels like and looks like and then the little triangle actually shrinks to that tiny little part and even, you know, the plaza outside also takes in the form of all these signs that is very prominent, you know, God sign. So this is what I think, you know, the immersion makes 
people feel through their senses. So uh, we cannot judge writing from a modern linguistic point of view. Uh, we can, we should put ourselves like the ancients to understand the ancient world. Okay, so. But then having said that, you will see that since our language is conditioned by our uh, gradual development, so uh, there's something very, very important because I kept telling you that, you know, since Alexander the Great, the Greek Empire began to expand, you know, uh, that was the age of the uh, areas, you know, that's the Ram age, you know, so they begin to also look at the sky, look at the star. There's one animal which has become very, very important, which is the gold family. Family. And then I don't know whether you pay any attention to them or not, but uh, with my experience living with the desert people, living with the shepherd, I actually pay a lot of attention to the eye of the um of any goat family. They are the only animal that has an eye, you know, with a slit like that going horizontally. So you can see that it is directly related to the wood itself. So uh, chances are that, you know, everything actually wraps up, you know. Uh, so uh, every one writing doesn't have one single reason. There are many of reason from architecture, from animal world, from, from what they believe astrologically or affect the way they express themselves. So in ancient Greek, in the Bible, theos is also used as the verb to see, okay? So uh, that's why Alexander the Great also keep wearing the ram horn. So you will see that uh, everything, you know, uh, wraps up, you know, to contribute to the understanding of a word, okay? So that's why even the modern word of thalmologist, you know, you have, you also have the, the tether sign right there because uh, those words words that were already built in long, long time ago, okay? So um, the other thing is that, you know, uh, nowadays you also link the gold with the, the image of devil, but this is a, a mixed up, you know, because in a way, you know, there were people who believed that that's a sign of God, as the ancient Egyptians, uh, ancient God, Knom is also uh, present himself as a ram. So uh, they actually flip back and forth because the monotheism tried to vilify fry all the all the pagan gods before so but they succeeded in certain way but they fail in certain way so uh, all the remnants of the ancient civilization is still alive in our languages in and in our world okay so uh, I will go on to uh, give you a, another example of reading, how the ancient hear differently, okay? I'm sure you have seen this if you saw the last two episodes, but uh, all these uh, different writings, you know, but in reality, when I lived in the world, when I go to these different places, I will, I will read them out to you. So you judge with your own ear, don't use your eyes, okay? Uh, the, uh, the golden uh, calf, you know, which I kept saying should be a female, should be a golden hiver and should not be also uh, not just representing the calf you know it should be something even higher the Jews might be actually worshipping uh, the consciousness itself it's something much higher than just an animal form okay they call it agil and then in, in Arabic agil actually means the chief the head the mind the intellect whoever leads okay in a way it's a leader okay so in Hungarian agil is also the brain, the cerebrum, and then this is uh, Chinese, uh, and then it means the forehead, and then the alka, and the all they point to this part of the human body. So this aga, 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 alka. So you tell me that are they any difference, you know, but uh, because now we depend on too, too much on writing. But when I travel around, you know, a lot of the time, I don't even know how to write their writing. So I just use my ears. You know, a lot of the time it ended up that I found out how I understand with the sound only actually makes senses. So, um, so again, you know, this A sound is how come it become, you know, gradually the uh, Aleph alphabet that leads all the alphabet cycle because for the ancient this is the unseen energy and in the esoteric world it means you know the consciousness you know which certain people will stay will put it with our human mind certain people will put it in a super consciousness which become the idea of God okay so it really depends on where you stand but uh, after all this R sound is a living sound that actually becomes the 
the meaning of life itself, okay? So again, because I'm talking to, to you about R, and last time I talked to you about the bar sounds, that's why the ups, you know, the AB or AP is always the beginning of something. So um, if you just look at the word without its context, it's very difficult to see the link. But I will see you, uh, show you the medieval church. You know, I studied in Spain for six years. Uh, there were a lot of chances that I actually uh, go inside a lot of abandoned old church churches and uh, the feelings that I see is very different from when you go to a well-established church. Uh, it's always those abandoned church that, that I actually uh, get to understand what the word means, okay? So this is the ancient setting of a lot of medieval church. You see a doom right there. This is what we call an apse. If you look up the dictionary, it, it will tell you this, a large semicircular or polygonal recess in the church and it has to be a doom roof and then typically on the eastern side and usually contain the outer so uh, there's one word you have to know all this condition to make this word and why is it that the orientation has to be on the eastern side you have to understand a lot of things the ancients practice in the ancient time okay first of all I want to ask you to look at an ancient writing this is a hieroglyph means human you will see that the patriarchal uh, uh, scholars will tell you that this is a sun with the sun's ray but I can from a female point of view of view I will also tell you that you can understand it as a as a a fountain with water flowing out because you know the cover of this stone you know it will actually much faster to carve a straight line instead of all carving all this broken line it's actually there's a difference uh, in meaning one is a light the other one is actually water drop okay and then um and uh, that's one very interesting thing when I uh, lived in Spain, you know, so uh, they, there is an expression called da luz, which means give light. But uh, da luz doesn't mean give light. Uh, it only used when you describe a female giving birth. Just look at this, look at the writing itself. This is, uh, I tell you, the medieval church to apse itself is a very sexual form, representing the, the womb of a female. Uh, this light actually comes through this three window which completes the form of human being this is where the uh, God you know give birth to all this human being and um, if you look at this also you know you can understand this as an eye and and of course this is Ein in Arabic and this is I in English and also An in Chinese and I in English so the sound is all the same and it all means the uh, origin of an, a fountain a spring okay Okay, so if you go closer, that's really an eye itself, the doom itself, and it's an eye, and the Mary is sitting right there, and then this uh, light comes out, that's why the Spanish actually say, da luz, give birth, which means give birth birth you know give light which means give birth and the Chinese actually has a writing like that that definitely has a lot to do with giving birth itself so if you group all this different culture together you see the full picture of what's hidden behind all these you know that the patriarchal society failed to tell you that is you can only find it you know back in the matriarchal world you know when a lot of the things was explained in a female point of view okay so um and also it also explain you know in uh, if you are greek you speak greek you know the word pupil kori also means the female as well so that's why you understand this part itself you know the pupil you know the center of the eye is actually is very sexual it also means you know the the womb of a female okay so this is what I call the complete immersion you have to be inside to understand and um, the next slide I will show you are even a stronger image okay but okay before I do that I have to explain this ups is closely related to the Latin up of course if you look up the the, the Latin up is actually the prefix to mean from somewhere you come from you know of course that's the, the mother or the god you come from okay depending on where you are humanist or you are a religious person okay then the next slide as I said is a total immersion I want to show you which what I experienced okay uh, just look at it quietly 
uh, this is what I try to reproduce to you when I was actually taken into an abandoned ancient Jewish temple in, in Yemen, in a small village in Yemen. This is all I saw when I walked into that completely dark room. All these windows were open towards the east. And um, remember that when the priests go into a temple, it's always uh, between dawn and early morning. So you will gradually see the morning sunrise and the light come out from that. And um, if you are in that, uh, in full immersion, you will really feel with all your senses. So sometimes with all this electric light uh, in the modern world, we modern people actually miss a lot. You know, we don't understand as the ancient see the world. That's why I said that you have to switch off the light to be able to see light. Because, you know, it is only through this, you know, when you see the, um, when you see the incense, you know, when the smoke were rising and then you will see them, uh, 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 lingering in the air you will see the moving dust in the air you will also smell the incense there's a total immersion of your, all your senses so it's a completely different world of what you understand the religious world is okay so so um, I, again, once again, understanding with your senses. So I compare this to an uh, Egyptian uh, mural. One, I will explain it as a, as a fountain, water coming out from the, from the eye of a spring. The other one is a sun's ray coming down. But you have to understand all those were mostly performed in the darkness. They don't see them as you see. You know, if you see those things in the darkness, you'll understand the wonder of it. So a lot of the temples, were, were, were built in a, with a specific location and the size is controlled and the geographic orientation facing the east actually makes you see the sunrise. I remember I also went to a monastery. I attend an early morning mass, you know, uh, when the sun rise, you know, when you see through the window where the, all the priests were, do, priests were doing all the ritual, it actually made me cry, you know, just out of that darkness when you see the sun. Uh, it's not of God or anything. It's just uh, uh, the sense of existence is very overwhelming. So uh, I just want to un you to understand that everything is very different from what you see in the modern world, okay? So um, uh, this total immersion it started thousands of years ago, so it is not nothing new in the virtual reality world. So underneath it's a passage, you know, I show you from a very famous Jewish historian Josephus. Josephus and then uh, it says, you know, it describes, you know, what the temple is, is like, you know, so it says that so careful is the provision for all the details of the surface, that the priest's en entry is timed to certain hours. Their duty was to enter in the morning when the temple was open. So you can imagine everything is meticulously arranged and also, you know, with the few things that they have inside, with just an altar, a table, a censer and a lampstand, a, a, a a lampstand with the weak light you can actually understand things much more stronger than all the electric light with tons of furniture around us that distract us from all the main things of existence in life so um, if you want to understand the ancient writing you really have to go back to a very very simple world okay so I, in the following slide, I want to show you, you know, the B. Uh, I said, you know, the B has a lot to do with the food. So that's why A and B has to lead the writing cycle. So uh, the A is the unseen energy. The B is the, B is the actual food. So uh, when I was following the Phoenician, you know, in uh, Tunisia, I see again and again tons of this uh, food, right? So what were they? They were actually pesto. Now you understand why the pesto is called pesto because they were made as a food you know uh, the food was actually a very sexual symbol at, in the uh, very early human history. That's why in Jewish world, you know, now uh, the food is still, you know, uh, equivalent, you know, it's a punning for the private part of both me, male and female. So if you turn this food upside down, this is to uh, press the seeds, you know, so you will understand the seeds, the idea of the seeds and the semen is very, very closely related to the food. So that's why, um, 
um, the ancient Egyptian directly has it as a B uh, word. Um, and then this is the Phoenician writing B. And then it become like this. It turns around and become your B. Okay. So uh, the ancient Egyptian also has a, a bigger part of the, the, the food. It's actually pet. Of course, you know, if you speak Greek, you will see pet. And of course, pedestrian or, or pet, you understand, is also part of the food. And that's why you have the P, also a mirror image of the P, because since ancient time, these were closely related ideas. Okay. So uh, now you're looking at the Chinese word. Word. This is uh, also we flip them upside down, inside out like this, you know. So uh, we also you were arguing what is the foot, what what is the head. It is also is is it the mind that drives the foot or the foot that drives the mind. So this is always an arguing point, and Chinese actually also have the reading a part as the foot itself. Look at that. Uh, this is Chinese Cantonese reading. Okay, so this is a very ancient reading. So you tell me that we. A different uh, family tree I don't think so okay so um, the other thing uh, this is closely related is also the our sound okay so last time I already did show you about the radix which also become the word radish is closely related with the root family of vegetable and also your rear part so the our is also closely related either to the head or to the foot you know everything is also always reversible so um, you if you under, if you look at the history of writing, they will tell you that the early Hebrew or Aramic writing, Ras is the head, you know, and gradually become like this. Look at how closely resemble they are, the B and the R. So basically, they understood it in a very different way. So uh, gradually in the Greek, you know, when the Ram took over, the R writing become like this. This is the Greek writing R. Okay, so that's why Alexander the Great is always wearing this. That's why you have the word uh, Ram. That's why all the royalty, you know, have all their outward uh, leading. So, um, um, how about the writing R? The writing R, uh, English R, is actually, you know, the write the real copy of the word, the, the animal itself. Okay, so, okay, so I think I will stop right here. Um, thank you for watching, you know, uh, I hope I have more time to explain in better ways.